Oh, God, stop sneaking up on me like that. Let me have my coffee in peace, huh? Come on. Oh, sit down. We gotta talk. So I've been drawing and posting online and subjecting the world to my artistic failures for six or seven years now. There have been many pieces of mine that I love that are amazingly well received. And there's also been a lot of flops. <laughs> Call me LeBron. Anyways, but through that process, like all 600 posts that I have on my page now, I think there's one really important lesson. And I'm gonna share that with you today so that you don't have to make the same mistakes that I did, even though you probably will because you never listen, huh? So I'm gonna just put up some of my favorite pieces that I've done over the past however many years. And I've been doing a little bit of uh, artistic introspection lately. The one thing that these pieces had in common was that I made them without expectations. No expectations for my own technical ability, no expectations for their online performance, and no expectation of the feedback that I might get when I show it to other people. That's the one thing, the one underlying theme for all of these pieces that I loved so much. Look, if you've ever drawn before, I'm sure you've had this very ununique experience. Or let's say you're lunchtime, you're in the cafeteria or something, you're sitting alone in the corner because you have no friends and you feel very sad about that. Sorry, I'm getting too specific. But you know, you just take out an old piece of wrinkly paper that you got an F on and you just start doodling something. Maybe you're like, man, I'm bored. I want to draw my OC. And within like five minutes, you look at that page and you're like, what the? I've been touched by God. You've just drawn the most beautiful portrait of your OC that you've ever done. All the proportions are perfect. The facial features look perfect. And it's like a perfectly imperfect piece because you did it on a wrinkly piece of paper with a bad pencil that you didn't really care about. And somehow you've made a masterpiece. And then here's the cruelest part. You take that same sketch. You're like, man, this is a beautiful sketch. I'm going to translate this onto an actual sketchbook page and make something that I'm really proud of. And you try to do it again and you just can't. Your OC just turns out looking like Peppa Pig, you know, the eyes on the side of the head and you just, you can't get it right. I think that's a universal experience for artists. And what's the difference here? Well, in one of them, you had no expectations going in. You were having fun with it. But then oftentimes when you set that expectation, when you set that bar and you're like, I'm gonna try to translate this into my sketchbook, when you let that narrative of like, oh, I gotta make it live up to this, I gotta make it as good as this, I gotta make it so that other people can see it and be super impressed by this. When that infiltrates your subconscious mind, you, you get tense. You're a little bit afraid of the marks that you're making now because there's expectations that you got to live up to. You know, it's like in art class, the teacher walks around and looks over your shoulder as you're drawing and you can sense the disappointment in them. Even though we don't really consciously think about it, there's a certain level of looseness that you can get. There are some artists who are just, you can tell they're really artistically limber. They're not as rigid. They're not as uptight. You know, they're kind of like, they're boneless. They're like boneless chicken. In a lot of my most recent pieces, I found that the ones that ended up being my favorites, they were often the ones that I went into thinking, you know what, whatever, I'm just gonna try this out. I genuinely have no idea how this one's gonna turn out, but I'm just gonna give it a shot anyways. And I find that when I have that mindset going into it, I tend to trust the process a little bit more. And by the end with that final piece, I'm always pleasantly surprised. And in contrast to that, whenever I make a piece thinking, are people going to like this? Is this going to be a popular piece? Is this one going to be good enough to go into my print shop? You know, whenever I start having thoughts like that, there's a good chance that that piece will not turn out the way I want it to. I think expectations of all kinds, expectations of how good the final piece should look, expectations of how other people are going to receive it, expectations of posting it on social media, all of these expectations are like weights that you tie to yourself. You know, it's almost like a way to hold yourself down. It's gonna just paralyze your creativity. Now, of course, expectations is not the only contributing factor to making good art. I know you also gotta have experience and artistic skill and all that, but for me, you know, if there's one thing that I've learned by sharing all these 600 something posts that I have on Instagram is that expectations, right? Thinking too much, worrying too much, kills your creativity, it destroys any chance of your art being good. Every single piece that I went into with that open mind, with no expectations, no worries about how many likes it's gonna get, 90% of the time, I'm happier with it than I thought I would be. And as a product of that, it actually ends up performing even better on social media. So it's kind of like counterintuitive. You try to do one thing, and the universe is like, no. And then you're like, fine, I'm not gonna try anymore. The universe is just like, whoa, man, hey, come on, here, here it is. They just hand it to you. So now, you know, looking back, I can honestly say that's one of the most important lessons that I've learned. And I think me starting out, it would have been very, very valuable to hear this message. So now I'm sharing with you guys, especially 
the little babies. A lot of us now are kind of just growing up surrounded by this environment of comparison. Everything is just instant gratification. The moment you put something up, you get instant feedback by how many likes you get, how many views you get. You always seem to be chasing the approval of other people or comparing yourself to somebody else. You could be looking at someone who's younger than you who draws better than you and you're like, oh my God. And you just sit there in the corner in pain, wondering what you've been doing for the last 10 years. We can all relate to that. We all feel that. And the next thing you know, you start carrying some of that baggage into your work. You start thinking, all right, this needs to be a certain way. I need to be as good as this. I need to get this many likes from this piece. And that's the most toxic thing that you can possibly inject into your art. This overwhelming sense of expectation. Here's actually a good analogy for this kind of mentality. Just yesterday, I went out for a run and I've been wanting to do a 10K and I've been feeling like I'm ready for it, but I just, I wasn't sure. I was like, hmm, like I expect to be at this pace. You know, I expect to feel this certain type of way. So maybe I need to do more practices with 5Ks first and get this pace down and then I'll feel secure enough to do it. But then yesterday, I don't know, something got inside of me not literal, but I was like, you know what? Screw it. I'm just going to try it. I'm going to just do it. I'm going to go at a pace that I'm comfortable with. I'm just going to do it. I don't expect to be able to go all the way to the end without stopping. I don't expect to be under a certain amount of time. And I did it. No stopping faster than I expected. Felt easier than I expected. It's the same thing in art, same thing in anything else that you're trying to do. If you put these crippling expectations on yourself, you're never going to get it done. That's one of the main reasons why so many artists can't finish a piece that they started. You think like, ah, oh, this is not going the direction that I wanted it to. So what am I going to do? I'm going to start fresh, start it over again. And that one doesn't go according to your expectations. So what do you do? You abandon it halfway and you start over again. So instead of us having those expectations, why don't we just throw them out the door, okay? Whether it looks good or not is up to the universe. Whether people like it or not is up to the universe take that weight off of yourself when you're about to create. I used to always say this thing to the babies that um, don't chase the numbers on social media. Don't chase likes. Don't chase people's approval. Just do it for yourself. Try to be the best artist that you can be and let your work speak for itself. And I think this no expectations thing is kind of a, an evolution of that. You know, it's like, especially nowadays uh, with the babies growing up around social media and all that, you expect to get this many likes or you're an absolute failure. It's just ridiculous. And like, I'm guilty of this too, right? I think about this all the time. That's why I have pieces that I hate. That's why I make stuff that I don't like. I've been thinking if it's affecting me, just imagine the effect that it's having on young artists who are growing up right now. It's horrible, this baggage of expectation. It's like walking around with a 45 pound plate strapped to your back. You're just, <laughs> now, not only do these expectations weigh you down in the process of creating, they can actually stop you in your tracks before you even start. You know, we've all been there. I've been there too. You know, you, you you look at a cool reference, you're like, wow, this is so complex and there's so much going on, but it's so cool. And I have this idea. I really want to realize this idea. And then you're like, man, but it's not going to turn out good. You know, I, I have a certain quality that I want to live up to. And if I do this really challenging thing, it's not going to turn out the way I expect it to. It's going to be an utter failure. Now you're back on your butt. You're scrolling Pinterest. You're not doing it anymore. You're not doing the thing that was going to progress your art. So that's the problem. And that's the lesson that I've learned. The key to making the best art that I can make is to expect nothing. It's so counterintuitive and it's so ironic, but I feel like that's just how the universe works. <laughs> Anyways, there's my yap session with you guys today. This is a lesson that I've wanted to share with you guys. And this is something that I've been, you know, stewing in for the last little while. Let me know in the comments. Let, let me know if this is something you experience as well. Let me know if this video helped you out at all, or if you just absolutely hated it. Maybe you can leave a hateful and mean comment down below. I would really appreciate that. But yeah, that's it for this video. I'll see you guys. Subscribe. All right. And then I will see you guys on the next video. I also have a Patreon. So like I do monthly tutorials there. This month we're talking about colors, like all the most essential things that you got to know about colors. If you're trying to render, this is going to be a godsend for you. All right. So th that's it. No more. No more plugs. Anyways, I just, I wanted to share this with you guys this week because I've also realized this camera and you guys, this 16 millimeter lens that I'm always talking to, this is kind of like my therapy. And maybe you watch my videos because this is kind of like your therapy. I don't really know what to say, but if you come to my videos for therapy, you are probably clinically insane.